<laughs> hey folks, Storm and Norman here. How's everybody doing today? I just want to show off this shirt here. This is my one and only Harry Chapin shirt. It says on the top what one man's life could be worth. <clears throat> and the song itself goes, um, if a man tried to take his time on earth and prove before he died what one man's life could be worth, well, I wonder what would happen to this world. That was Harry Chapin, who died in 1981, and I started writing songs one year later in 82. <clears throat> I think it's time for ba 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 ba. Here we go. <laughs> Just like me. Love song. I want someone who's just like me. I want someone alive and free. Someone to hold me. Someone to care. No one that's called for me. Someone to share. Share all my feelings, whatever they be. I want someone who's just like me. I've been alone for so long, it's a sin. I just want someone to let me on in. Sharing and caring and hearing my plea. I want someone who's just like me. Someone who's just like me. I want 
someone. I want someone. I want someone who is just like me. and singing but let me get famous first with these songs and then i could come out with more cds one after another after another after another you know these are the songs that it's gonna work for me not the songs that i have with me in the casio these are the songs that are going to do it so hope you enjoyed it and uh i will see you all tomorrow about the same time if you want to get in touch with me i do not answer facebook notifications or whatever uh you can email me at storlor94 yahoo.com and once again today is my harry chapin day <laughs> Hey, anyone who has never heard of Harry Chapin or only heard Cats in the Cradle, maybe, go on YouTube, do Harry Chapin search, 
and do one of the mixes, any one of the mixes, or do one of the live concerts, you know, any one of them, you will be amazed at what Harry Chapin had to offer the world. And it's too bad that he's gone. But you know something? I met him before he died. And I was selling encyclopedias. And I was basically selling education. I worked for Macmillan Publishing Company. They make all the school books. I wasn't really selling it encyclopedias. These were brand new, put together from scratch, 20 volumes, basically everything is taught in class from first grade to uh, the, uh, college. College level was Collier's, and these were for everyone else. Lots of pictures, easy reading, no big words. Easy to sell. But I was kicking, I was doing really well. And I had an office in Boulder, Colorado. I had 17 employees, 14 women, and three guys. And I was with Donna when uh, I saw him in concert, my girlfriend Donna, and we saw a line at the end. He was signing autographs. I went up and I told him what had happened to me in New York in 73 and what I'm doing now and pushing education, basically. And I said, if you really knew the whole story, you could write a song about me. And he gave me his home address. And he said, write it all down. I'll look it over and I'll let you know. So I wrote him a note with all the explanations of what had happened to me prior to 73 and what had happened after 73. And I was really doing very, very well uh, selling books, but pushing education. And I wrote him the letter. He wrote me back a handwritten letter saying, Dear Norman, I'm really sorry. I can't just sit down and write a song about you and your life. But don't be surprised if bits and pieces of your life come up in some of my new material. That was just before he died. I don't know what you want to call it, fate or coincidence or karma or I don't know. But a year later, I started writing songs. And when I started writing songs, let me tell you, for the first 20, 20, um, 21 days, the first three weeks, my hand was just constantly on the page, on the page, on the page, one song after another. I wrote 26 songs in three weeks. That's almost two a day. Uh, one a day, some days two, you know. And I had a feeling that it was uh, a, a Harry's presence guiding my hand across the page. I don't know. I, I just had that feeling. I don't. I, I've talked to his brothers about it, and they didn't. Uh, they didn't think it was. Uh, they didn't believe me. But you know, I, I, there's a whole long story. In the sixth grade, I wrote a poem, and the teacher, after I read it in front of the class, and everyone was cracking up, laughing. Uh, the teacher called me outside the room and told me I stole it. Where'd you steal that from? You couldn't. You don't have any talent. You can't write poetry. Where'd you steal that from? And I kept saying, I wrote it, I wrote it, I wrote it. So because of that, maybe you know, I didn't write for 20 years. And then when I was in that studio apartment on $75 a week unemployment, but I was doing okay, uh, you know, as far as food and entertainment-wise, you know, um, I was taken care of. So, uh, you know, I was happy. I was, I was okay. And I just wrote all those songs in three weeks. And it was amazing. Then I met Mike Hicks. And then we did those three songs uh, with, the, with the backgammon board and the acoustic guitar. And then I started writing again. Then I met Darren with his eight-year-old daughter, Jenny, and I wrote that song. And I just kept on writing since 1982, and I've, I've got 289 songs. I do have all of them on disc, on CDs, but I'm not going to play just me and the Casio. Unless I'm going to look through them and see if I can find a song that I think everyone will enjoy. 
like coffee, for example. I played that one the other day. You know, that's that's on volume four. You know, I have volume four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. I think eleven CDs. So, oh, plus the three A. We have twelve CDs. So. Plenty of music, but I'm gonna play the songs with the guitar because those are the best sounding and those are the ones that get the most attention. So I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all tomorrow. Sorry for talking you off. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs>